Hello friends, my name is AJ. I'm sorry I was not able to make a video on Monday, how just because of a few of the things that I had to do. However, I am going to be making videos for the rest of this week on schedule. If you are looking for, for example, the Minecraft Modding Monday series, that'll be starting probably in two weeks again on Mondays. I've gotten a lot of comments for that series of a lot of people requesting different things, such as adding, you know, uh, custom music, music discs, uh, farming and food and all of that. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to get to all of that. However, that will be in about two weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. In this video, I wanted to talk about a question that I've gotten a lot in the comment sections of my many different videos. And the main question that a lot of people have been asking me is that, is an iPad good enough for programming? Or alternatively, should I get an iPad specifically for programming? In this video, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on this question. So first off, the first thing that I wanted to do is I actually wanted to answer the question and then I'm going to go into the reasons why. I'm not going to you know, wait all the way till the end to actually answer the question. In my opinion, if is an iPad good enough for programming and should you get an iPad specifically for programming? I would say the answer to that would be no. And there are multiple reasons why I have this opinion. And so I'm going to be going through the different reasons and I'm going to be kind of just talking about uh, the, some of these different things. The first thing that I think is, is a major knock toward the iPad is going to be the File Explorer. Now, in iOS 13 and also the upcoming iOS 14, there have been many changes to the iPad Files app. And the Files app allows you to see kind of different files for different applications, only a few files for on device, and then also uh, for iCloud specifically, your files on iCloud. And while those things are very helpful, you're still not able to get the full level of file explorer that you would get, for example, on a actual Mac computer or even a Windows computer, even a Linux computer. Any computer generally has a file explorer that you're going to be able to organize, keep files on your device. Because of course, a main thing about programming is that you're going to be managing a lot of files. You're either going to be doing this locally on your device or you're going to be using something like GitHub to do that. And I do have something to talk about in terms of GitHub in a second. But in terms of the file explorer, simply it is just not as usable it is not as functional and you're going to be finding yourself uh, realizing that you cannot do a lot of the things in inside of Apple's or the iPad's files app that you could do in any other computer's file explorer. And for a lot of people who are used to that type of thing and who are definitely going to be getting into programming a lot more, you will find that even in a lot of tutorials, it's going to be much more difficult for you to manage everything that you need to do. Now, of course, the two workarounds for this is that if you want to really uh, kind of do some of the programming with iPad, uh, the two workarounds that a lot of people have kind of started to do is one, they use iCloud specifically, so they'll put all their files in iCloud and then use the apps on their iPad to access those files in iCloud. That's perfectly okay. However, again, it's not necessarily on device and just simply due to the fact that you're connecting to the internet, if you made a change, for example, on a different device or a computer, and then for example, you're in a situation where you're not connected to the internet, you have to wait for everything to re-download. So in general, that is going to be a little bit more difficult. And then second, the other thing that a lot of people do is that if they have an iPad, for example, the fourth generation iPad Pro that has a USB-C on the bottom of it, some people actually plug in a USB drive to it. And you can actually plug in a USB drive and access the files inside of that. And that is a potential workaround. However, again, the customization, some of the things that you can do very, very quickly in a file explorer on a computer is simply not possible on an iPad. Now, hopefully, as we move on with new iOS versions, such as 14, if they make even more changes, or iOS 15 and kind of beyond, or iPad OS 15, I apologize, it's kind of what they're calling it now, then uh, maybe they'll add a few more features, and I hope they do, because even to the level, to get it maybe to the level of an Android, where you can actually see some of the files within the device, of course, they're never going to do that simply due to security reasons that Android, you know, uh, does not necessarily have those things. You're allowed to see the entire or you're able to see a lot more files and a lot more of the file directory of the device than on an iOS or on an Apple device. We'll see if some of these things change. But that is definitely one point that I wanted to talk about. Second, another thing that I think is a very important thing to mention when we're talking about programming is, of course, 
IDEs or integrated development environments. And some of those who may be newer to programming may have no idea what that actually means. And essentially what an IDE is, it, it is the software where you write your code in. So for example, on a computer, one of the very popular ones a lot of people use is Visual Studio Code, which I guess some people don't really consider that as an IDE. Let me give another example. So like if you're doing iOS development, the program or the software that you will use to write up your code, that is going to be Xcode. That is an example of an IDE. Another maybe Python IDE, which you may have heard of, is uh, PyCharm by uh, JetBrains. And these are, again, programs that you use to write your code. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up are the IDEs on iPad or the lack thereof. That is definitely a concern. Now there are the only equivalent to IDEs on an iPad are apps. And there are a lot of apps that can do really cool things. In fact, on my channel, I talked about two very good apps, which is going to be a uh, Pythonista and uh, Carnets, which is like a Jupyter type thing, which is also related to the programming language of Python. So both Pythonista and Carnets are both a Python uh, uh, application where you can write Python code. And while those are very, very good, and they're very good for the kind of the different purposes that you may need to use for, for example, Python, and you know, there's an app called Swift Playgrounds by Apple, which allows you to write Swift code, but doesn't actually allow you to do iOS development on, which is very unfortunate. Uh, th that simple, the the ability to, or the access, I should say, to have, you know, stable, really good applications for iPad that allow you to do the same things that a computer will have simply does not exist yet. And I'm referring to many things such as Java, such as JavaScript, you know, kind of, because there are so many different things, like Visual Studio, something like that came on the iPad, that would be a game changer. Or even something that a lot of people asked for in the last WWDC conference for Apple was bringing Xcode, which is the program, again, that allows you to write iOS apps. They wanted to bring that to iPad. Unfortunately, they did not announce that. But these are many different things that, if done, would make the iPad amazing to actually be able to do iOS development on, or sorry, any type of programming on. However, due to the fact that the IDE support, or again, when I say IDEs, I'm talking about the apps you write programs are programs on. They simply are not going to be as sophisticated, as easy to use, and simply as accessible uh, than something that would be on a computer. So a lot of the things that you may want to do, you'll eventually find yourself getting very frustrated because you simply cannot do some of the basic things that you could do on a computer. Another major uh, major problem with the iPad, which a lot of people have also said, is the lack of a terminal. So if you use, for example, Windows, you'll have command line or command prompt. If you use a Mac, and I believe also Linux, they call it terminal as well. If you use those two, there's something called terminal, and that's kind of, you know, that uh, black, like that black, um, black application, they're able to type in, you know, it's what kind of a lot of people envision when they're doing programming. You don't necessarily use terminal that much, uh, like for programming, but a lot of people use terminal and terminal is very important for many different things. For example, for Python, it's installing packages. Uh, if you terminal can be used to install frameworks into, for example, iOS apps or basically third party different components, which can make your app better. Another thing that terminal allows you to do is it allows you to act access your files and then also terminal pretty much allows you to do so many other things which you cannot do kind of in a uh, general program and a lot of people prefer to use terminal and terminal is simply not available on an iPad. Now, there are apps that help to mimic a terminal. However, still, you're not gonna get that same functionality of a terminal that you may be used to uh, on something like an iPad for, of course, the completely free price that there is on the iPad. And so that is one of the major concerns when it comes to, you know, the iPad is the lack, again, of file explorers and also the lack of terminal. And these are more software side on Apple's. This isn't necessarily on what people can do because people can try to replicate, for example, a terminal. And there are a few apps that do do that. And, you know, they some people have created File Explorer apps, but all of those things are very limited on what Apple actually allows. The IDEs, developers can try to work as well as they can to create IDEs or, again, apps that allow you to write code on an iPad. However, those other two things, the File Explorer and the Terminal, that is very, very uh, limited to what Apple actually allows developers to do. 
Another thing with Terminal is a lot of people use GitHub with Terminal and that's simply not going to be that valid of an option. Also with the fact that A, you don't have Terminal and B, you also you don't have a file explorer to really you know, look through and commit and push and pull different files. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about is related, and that is, of course, GitHub support. Now, there is an app which is called Working Copy, which I am going to uh, show me using. It's actually a very nice app that allows you to connect to different GitHub repositories. And if you don't know what GitHub is, GitHub, in a sense, is basically a place where you're allowed to put your code and you can then keep your code almost in a type of a cloud. However, it almost keeps track of the different changes you make. It's called version control. So basically, you know, if somebody somewhere in your team makes an update, they can put it into GitHub and then you can see their update. You can choose to then take their update, add it to your computer. You can choose to, you know, merge the different files together. You can choose to, uh, if you make a mistake, go back to a previous version. These are all things that GitHub allows you to do. And Working Copy is a pretty decent app and does allow you to do a lot of those things. However, of course, some people do want terminal and some people want a little bit more of that flexibility, which of course you simply will not be able to do on an iPad very, very easily. All right, and the other thing that I do want to talk about involves kind of downloading, and this includes downloading files. So for example, if I want to download a, you know, a specific file maybe for, so what somebody did on, for example, you know, a, a GitHub page, you want to download something, or maybe you, you found some sort of package or some code you wanted to download. Downloading is much more difficult on a iPad when you are actually trying to, for example, if you have like a compression and you need to unzip it or you have all these different things that you're trying to do, that is also a slight limitation. Of course, downloading is actually not that bad on an iPad and you can always, you know, airdrop different files to it if you have to from a computer. But again, if, you're t if, you, have to, if you have to use the computer at some point in the process, then the computer itself is still going to be better generally for programming than something like the iPad. But downloading files, and again, that entire file explorer thing, I, the Apple iPad does sometimes run into problems with that. Now, downloading third-party frameworks is another thing that I wanted to talk about. And that again goes with kind of GitHub and like, for example, depending on if you're trying to download something for, let's say, um, Node, right, JavaScript, or you're trying to do something for Python or even something for uh, Swift, then that is going to be also very difficult. Certain apps allow you to do it in Python. For example, Carnets I talked about, it allows you in the app to actually download packages, but apps like Pythonista do not allow you to do that. Apps such as, um, what's another example? Well, Swift Playgrounds doesn't necessarily allow you to do that very easily. So all of those things are also a concern for developers who are trying to learn a lot more and then use some other packages and external code they'll simply find it a lot more difficult to be able to do that on an iPad than on the computer where you can very easily you know, follow instructions on the internet and do it. Another point that I wanted to talk about is going to be deploying. And when I talk about deploying, I actually mean taking your code and turning it into a final product. If you are, for example, trying to uh, write an iOS app, you need a Mac computer with Xcode to actually be able to take your code and turn it into a physical app, which then you can, for example, deploy or release onto the App Store. This is going to be something very similar with anything such as web, such as you know Python. If you want to actually make something final and deploy, even with Java, if you're trying to make something final and deploy, you're probably going to need a computer at some point in that step, and you're not going to be able to do that as easily with an iPad. All right, everyone, I have talked about a lot of negatives toward an iPad and many people are probably wondering and it probably, you know, maybe you're thinking at this point that why even bother with an iPad if it has all of these, you know, type of negatives toward it. Now, all of these negatives that I talked about are fairly specific and are going to be necessarily affecting people who are intermediates and then people who are more advanced in programming. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say that there is somebody who knows absolutely nothing about Python, about Swift, about any programming language, and they simply want to learn. That's all they're doing. Maybe they're following a course you know, on some website, and now they're just trying to learn, and that's all they're doing. Then you can technically get away with it on an iPad. You won't necessarily be able to follow, though, all of the steps. And that's where you know I kind of, I do caution people because 
if, for example, you're following a course and they tell you to do something in terminal and then you don't have terminal, you're going to be getting even yourself even more confused trying to read about all the different alternatives to, to trying to actually do something which you still haven't fully learned, if, if that makes sense. So it, it's a little bit more of a learning for people who are just learning or doing something very, very, I'm saying very small, then an iPad may work. But as you're doing slightly more advanced, advanced tutorials and then more and more things, you're going to find yourself kind of stuck because there are a lot of things you're not simply not able to do on an iPad that you can easily do on a computer. And because majority of people on the internet are releasing tutorials for like, you know, for different things on a computer, and that's generally what you're going to have to be following or would be following if you're doing a course or doing different tutorials or trying something new or, you know, et cetera, then it's going to be very hard for you to follow along oftentimes because somebody may open, you know, some, some terminal thing, type something in, and now you're sitting on your iPad, you're not able to do that. And now you're just confused. You're trying to figure out, you know, what are they doing first of all, because you're still learning it. It's not like you even understand it yet. And now you're trying to find out alternate alternatives for something that you don't still understand. And that is where, you know, you can have a lot of problems. If you're trying to learn, then I definitely recommend, you know, having a computer because simply you're going to be able to, you know, follow and you're going to be able to follow the general instructions that people are maybe saying, and it's simply going to allow you to grow. So going back to that question, another person had asked me, should I buy an iPad specifically for programming? And of course the answer would be no. Get a computer instead. Uh, if you're looking for an, a Mac computer, then the MacBook Air is a great computer. It's almost the same price as, for example, an iPad Pro once you add all of the accessories to it. And that's going to be significantly better for you to actually purchase in the long run than something like an iPad. Now, if you are mainly a student, for example, and you're going to be, you know, you want to write notes, you want to work on documents and collaborate, you may want to play, you know, a few games, you may want to, you know, draw or you're kind of an artist type of person and maybe you want to like try out one or two things in coding, but you don't intend it to be a long term thing. Then an iPad may be better for you because, you know, for the drawing, the note taking iPad is absolutely amazing for those things. So if you are, you know, somebody who is who doesn't necessarily are not looking to get that advanced in programming, just want to learn a little bit and you may already have an iPad for some of the other things you're trying to do, or you're trying to get a device specifically for all those other things such as art, such as taking notes like handwritten notes, then an iPad may be helpful for those other things, not necessarily for a programming, but maybe for some of kind of the other things you want to do. And one of the things that I want to say is that iPad, for example, is it's not impossible to program on an iPad like you can and there are many ways you can technically attempt to. So if you're worried that, well, if I get this iPad for all the other things that I need to do, then if I ever want to try coding, like will I ever be able to even try it? The answer is yes, you'll be able to try it. However, if you're again getting more into it and you're going to be spending a lot more time doing it, then I recommend something else such as getting a computer, a desktop, even a cheaper, you know, Windows computer, anything that allows you to do some of the things on a computer that you can do, I definitely recommend that. All right, everyone, this is a little bit of a longer video, but I did want to talk about some of the different points that I believe are going to be very important when you're kind of talking about, you know, should you or should you get an iPad for programming or, you know, is an iPad good enough for programming? I just wanted to kind of go over some of those things. So in conclusion, again, as I was saying, if you're a beginner, don't intend to do programming that much. You're really just trying to learn some basics an iPad is fine. But if you're going to be learning some of those more advanced things and eventually a computer will become a necessity. If you have any kind of other points or any comments on some of the things I talked about, definitely leave them in the comment section. I'd love to uh, talk with you and have a conversation with you. And definitely, if you have any questions also, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Hit the notification bell also to get notified. And as always, thanks for watching.